vs. Film. Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome to Man vs. Film. We're going to be talking about The Last Witch Hunter, Vin Diesel's latest attempt to try and spark another franchise movie. This one is based on his character that he plays in Dungeons and Dragons with, and let's just face it, it's kind of off-putting to start off with. And first and foremost, I'll tell you why. Because Vin Diesel has a beard at the start. That's right, facial hair, and he has got some head hair as well. In fact, let's just put a picture in. Put it everywhere. Put a picture up here. Can you see this guy's beard? Look at the beard. It's... Off Putin. Vin Diesel with facial hair. Vin Diesel with hair. It's just weird. Anyway, also in this movie uh, is Michael Caine, Elijah Wood, Rose Leslie, and Joseph Gilgan. That's a decent cast. And directing this epic movie is Breck Eisner. Now, Breck Eisner did uh, Sahara, a movie that I really like. Probably shouldn't, but I really do. And he also did The Great, The Crazies remake. Great. It's good. Yeah, Breck Eisner, he's got a, a kind of strange sort of, like, track record so far, so there was nothing else on the cinema, I had to go and see The Last Witch Hunter, that was the only thing at the time I was going that I hadn't seen, and I went and I didn't want to see it, I didn't think it was going to be that great, and do you know what? It's completely mediocre. The story is about uh, this group of people chasing down this witch that caused the Black Plague. Um, Vin Diesel captures the, the witch, and as he kills her, she curses him with immortality. Now, the church being the church, take advantage of this, absolutely, and they just uh, train him up and follow him around, pretty much documenting all his fights against witches and witchcraft and things like that. So he's basically like the police force for witches around the world. Jump forward into the current day and age, um, his old church companion, Michael Caine, is retiring. The new one, Elijah Wood, is just about to take over. Now, on the night Michael Caine retires, someone attacks and kills him. Why? Did somebody kill him? And it leads him down a path of somebody trying to bring the witch that Vin Diesel killed back to life. That's the basic premise. Well, that's the story. You don't need much more than that. The story gets a little convoluted. It's a, and yet at the same time kind of simple as well. Um, Vin Diesel is Vin Diesel. He even drives a fast car in it. And I'm sure at one point one of the characters calls him Dom. Although I may be misremembering that. Who knows? Elijah Wood has seemed to get typecast in these little roles that... I think he's better than that. I think he's better than this movie and I think he can do better action than that. Michael Caine seems to be there for a paycheck. He's, and he doesn't really do much, he's just Michael Caine. And that's about it. Rose Leslie does as well as she can. She's probably about the best thing about the movie, in fact. The special effects are really good. Um, some of them are really creepy. I liked the action in it, kind of. It was nothing spectacular. It was just kind of perfunctionary. And there's not really much more to say about The Last Witch Hunter, unfortunately. I kind of enjoyed it. I'm already forgetting about it. Would I watch it again? Probably. It was on TV. I wouldn't search it out to watch it. I would watch it again. It wasn't as bad as I expected it to be, which is about the best thing I can say about it, which is a kind of backhanded compliment. I understand that. Yet again, Vin Diesel with a beard. I would have liked to have seen a movie set around um, the one in the medieval times where they're hunting down the witch. That looked far more interesting than the one we get in the modern day. That seemed to be the best part of the movie for me and it could have been really interesting to see that going forward. It's got some nice ideas in it, it's got some uh, good special effects like I said, but other than that, instantly forgettable. It's not something you have to search out in the cinema to go and see it in the big screen to get the full effect of it. It's something that you can quite easily catch on Netflix at home and if I was to give it a rating I would probably give it two and a half out of five. It is average and no more than that. And I'll see you next time, Man vs. Film. So thanks for watching my video. Up in front of you are two videos that you can click. It will take you to other videos of mine. And there's that big subscribe button at the bottom. So please click that subscribe button. And if you like the video, hit like as well. Thanks for watching.